Guys, hey, it's Boomer. Welcome back to the Survival Series. I know it's been a while since we've last put up an episode, and we're about to show you why. We've been very busy working on something. Unfortunately, you know, just like 99.99% uh, .99 of the world, um, you know, you only have so much time outside of work to work on projects, and this was one of them that took a couple of weeks to complete. And so, why don't we just show you? That we have finished, although I gotta get a little bit closer. We have finished a 256 block diameter circle, removing all the water. Finished this up just a little while ago. Let's take you on a tour. I'll come down here to the wall. Whoops, oh good. <clears throat> wow, hey, all right, we've already got a visitor really anxious to come see the new base. So what we've done, and actually I said 256, technically it's 255. I'm building a base on an odd number of blocks this time versus an even. That's the center. There's gonna be another ring going around it at about 125 blocks, I believe, uh, will be the walkway coming right out of the center of that. And out of each one of those will be towers that will go down all the way to essentially bedrock. <clears throat> Initially, the base design here was going to remove all this down to the bedrock, completely remove anything inside of the bedrock, and then we are going to spot fill the blood bedrock, excuse me, at level uh, five, rule I equals level five, and we're going to put black concrete in to kind of speckle the bedrock all the way through. And then on top of that, we're looking to add four layers of black glass. And even with black glass, you still get that in-depth look. It's a little bit better with brighter colors, especially green. I think that lime color works great with this. Uh, Escal 85 was the first person I saw use a technique on a Hermitcraft server a couple years ago. We're going to do uh, very similar. There's my food. My armor's just about dead fighting off mobs here. Um, but we're going to do a very similar technique with the black. And then we're going to take the walls, because obviously the sand is not going to be the permanent wall. Oops. Let's uh, take this out here. The sand is actually, it was just a temporary holder to get us to where we needed to go. So what we're going to do, let's see. I just want to take a whole ton of damage while I'm running through here. So all this is going to come on. I'm probably going to mine most of this gravel before we go. <clears throat> Excuse me. But we're going to take the walls down to whatever the natural landscaping surface is, wherever there's dirt or stone or gravel, sand, whatever it is outside of the walls. The floor is going to go up to that level as black concrete. And then to the top of the sand will be black glass. And that was my initial plan. And then I decided against it, and I was simply going to leave this, drill down in there to put my towers, and then start working on cleaning up the landscaping. And instead, we're uh, going to go with the initial plan. After I was spending some time looking at it, uh, it just didn't, I didn't like how this was looking and the sheer amount of work it was going to take to clean this up. Now, I don't say sheer on more lightly because it took me two weeks to remove all this water, and you can imagine all the time and effort that's gone into putting this together. So doing work has never been an issue, excuse me, an issue for me. Uh, as you can see, I clearly like to go back. However, uh, and now I can finally tell you, too, what server we're on. The server's called Blue Mythos. Uh, it's a server put together by a bunch of friends of mine. Uh, who we all met on, on the previous server that we used to play on it. We don't play on it anymore. Uh, but as a server, currently just survival. Uh, it's not pure vanilla. We do have a few things added, but not much. Um, what I'll do is I'll post in the description how you can go about joining. It is a whitelisted private server. Uh, to get onto the server, you do have to apply. Uh, you will apply on the website. 
you'll link your Minecraft account to the website, and then you'll fill out a server whitelist application if you're interested in joining. Uh, and then the staff review your application, and if everything's good, we'll whitelist you onto the server. Uh, but you can check out the website at Blue Mythos, M Y T H O S, Blue Mythos dot engine e n j i n dot com and again i'll post this all in the description uh, so if you'd like to know a little bit more about the server you can start checking out the website you can apply to be a member there uh, and then link your account to the to the website your minecraft account and then like i said you can fill out the server application and i'll post all those links in the chat what we're going to do today tonight i've already started setting up we are going to take everything down to bedrock. A couple challenges that I have to make sure is one, because of given where I'm dropping the TNT from, that it wouldn't go back up and destroy my uh, my bar up here. We had to make sure there was a six block difference between the two at a minimum. So we had to clear a, a tunnel over there so that we would do that. Redstone's in place for those three. Nothing's loaded. I don't have any TNT loaded. I do have to start crafting it. I have roughly, oh, I'm going to say about four double chests of sand set aside. And uh, I've got about just a little bit over a double chest of gunpowder. And with my balance, I'm going to go to the server shop and purchase. This is the problem is I don't really know how much TNT I'm going to need. I haven't tried to do the math to figure this out. I can tell you it is going to be a ton. I can't see any less than three double chests at a bare minimum to put this together. So to, to pull that off, you know, 10,000 TNT, I'm going to need 40,000 gunpowder. I don't even have enough to purchase all that. So I'm going to have to continue to work on it. This is going to take some time. Uh, and as these go off, I do know uh, I have at least one spawner underneath all this that I did find in a cave. It is a spider spawner. I would like to go in there and grind for a while before I reach it. Uh, I'd like to put together at least a double chest of string. I also know that there are a lot of unexplored caves, and I believe I have a mine shaft. Uh, on the border of one side, and I think it's over there. I'm pretty sure. So we also had to figure out how far can we set TNT away from walls and builds to make sure they don't damage. Right now we've got it set at six blocks. So the TNT, when I initially did the center area, we set those at five. And we didn't really have problem, too much problems with TNT, setting off other TNT, causing it to go flying. With this much, you know, there's tiny delays. There's one tick delays every three dispensers. So we shouldn't really see a TNT pushing TNT into the build. Uh, but I made it six blocks away versus previously I'd done it five. So even if it does happen, we've got an extra block space. Uh, so at the most, you know, if one or two blocks here get damaged or if it knocks out one or two uh, blocks of sand it's not the end of the world but i'm pretty confident on how this is set up that you know if this is the last one here <clears throat> and it's going to drop down in here I, I don't think we're going to have to worry about the walls being damaged i am pretty sure i'm going to have to go back and manually clear stuff out so what i want to do is set up couple more of these and uh, once I've got maybe five or six of these rows set up uh, we'll start working on crafting some TNT probably for each dispenser at this level why I'm at y equals roughly 59 it's gonna probably take at least a stack in each dispenser to get all the way down to bedrock and to uh, efficiently clear it all out so I guess the first thing we need to do is put up the rows. Give me a few minutes and I'll be right back. So guys, we have finished our first round of clearing. We've gone through, I think we went through just about the entire stack. Yeah, there might be two, three, four, and a few of these. 
we did learn a couple very valuable lessons in this process. One, we have the initial space from the wall to the TNT dropper at six blocks or dispenser, excuse me. And of the first 10, nine of them took out part of the wall. So when we build this the next time around, we need to make sure we're seven blocks away. And I realize I might leave a little bit in here, which is okay. Better than having to put the whole wall back together. We have a giant puzzle mess here that uh, because instead of going five blocks apart here, we went six between rows and between dispensers. And that clearly was too far. So we need to make sure that every five blocks in every direction, we have a TNT dispenser. Because it's going to take the better part of a day going through and clearing out this remainder. So I'll work on that. And I will uh, actually, before we do, I do want to take you down here if I can get down without killing myself. I don't have any water on me. So this is going to be one of those. Oh, and there's a creeper down there. I'll tell you what, get the sword. Let's see if we can get down there without running into too much trouble here. What's the path look like? There aren't a whole lot of blocks here. If I can get onto that one, maybe I can get and just drill straight down. That wasn't too bad. Oh, but the skeleton's going to come after me. Oh, wow. Uh oh, oh, I'm dead. Oh. Yeah, all right. Okay, so anyways, uh, yeah, we do have back on the server. Um, so anything here to Y equals four. Yep, that's where bedrock stops. And it looks like this might have been a change. I don't know how recent it is. It used to be bedrock came up to five. But in this entire area, bedrock has not risen above four. I don't know if it's because we're in the ocean or if that was a change in the game. Uh, either way, it's okay. If we do manage to discover some bedrock at Y equals five, they're going to simply get absorbed into the glass structure that'll be built above them. So I don't need to clear out these remaining stones and I don't need to clear out any remaining lava unless it's at Y equals four. So all this will be covered up with black concrete. That all be covered up so there'll be no sign of it left at all. Just want to get through here carefully. Uh-oh, somebody's coming to say hi. Oh, I'm in trouble. This might be one of those death situations here. Oh yeah, all their friends. They got me. All right, I'm going to get to work on this and I'll be back in a while. So we have cleaned up uh, over the course of the last day and a half my major mess that I made from the TNT carpet bombing. Now you saw that we had uh, 70 dispensers in here. It took 4,000 TNT roughly to carve this out. And look how small of an area I got cleared. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking too. Oh crap. I have a little bit down here to finish up yet, but. So it presents a couple of challenges. Uh, one, the sheer amount of time that it took to set it up to get that much TNT, raw material collection, to launch it, clean up water and lava as we went along, uh, continuous removal of blocks and stuff, uh, and then the removal of the redstone gear after the fact. And I can't place concrete powder down yet or concrete period, because as I continue to carpet bomb in certain areas, it's going to destroy it or at least break it loose. So that leaves me with the dilemma is I actually have to clear all of this before I can even start. Put, well, I mean, I don't have to clear all of it, but a lot of it's going to have to get cleared before I can start putting in black concrete. The other problem I realized, uh, looks like we're about to get a visitor here. Let's see. Give me, wow, my inventory is a mess. Um, is XP. Now, I actually did start clearing this section over here. And this was above ground a little bit. And I've gotten a whopping like four layers cleared out of here. I cleared part of that mountain shear off. 
but XP is going to be a serious problem. And so we've actually started, I'm going to see if I can find a way down here without taking too much damage. Looks like we might be able to make it all the way. Ooh, that was cool. Ooh, very close. Um, we're going to start building an EXP farm, and it's going to be a cactus-based smelter. And looking at all the plants and crops that we can put in again, this is very temporary too, by the way. This is going to be simply just for the purposes of having XP to repair my shovels and picks in this dig. Enjoying some nice coffee tonight, relaxing. So what I have set up in place right now is a very short, small smelting system. Um, it's based off of one that Cubfan 135 did a few years ago, I believe in 113 when Kelp came up. Uh, I, it's much smaller, it only has five furnaces, which is okay, because at the rate that I'm going to be chewing through picks, I don't need 16. Uh, I'm going to have to make a pretty good sized cactus farm, though, uh, to get a serious amount of XP. So, what we've done is we've modified a line of cobblestone right here. I'll just jump up. Whoops. Why is this so hard? There we go. We've put a redstone line of cobblestone back here. And what that does is that locks the hoppers. So, when it's time to pull out the XP, I simply flip this down, wait for one item to get stuck in a furnace, pull it out, and all the stored XP will come out. I'm hoping, because of where I put it, I'm going to be in this area for an awfully long time, clearing dirt, stone, you know, everything that's in here. So I should be able to generate a pretty fair amount of cactus. And cactus generates one XP uh, for each one smelted. I looked at a kelp farm, but it's either only 0.1 or 0.2. Uh, and nothing else was really above like 0.3. So cactus uh, is a way to go. Just for the temporary moment, I've put down chests. And more than likely, what I'm going to do is put a dispensing system just to shoot it right into a block of lava. Because I'm not going to need dubs of cactus green. I mean, who in their right mind stores cactus green? in a, Okay, well, I should be quiet because I had one map on the former server where I had 12 of them. But other than Iskal or Mumbo, I can't think of anybody else that would store, or myself, 12 dubs of cat screen. Anyways, we're not going to need it. So we're going to simply, uh, at some point, burn it off. So let's get up here and we'll show you how this works. This up top, this hopper, will be the center of the collection system of cactus that falls. We're going to build a, I believe it's 19 by 19. Essentially, every layer will be able to hold 48 cactus plants. It'll all go from water down to this hopper. When this hopper minecart fills up with 320 cactus, this comparator signal that's on a comparator, we have a signal of 15 here for a redstone, 14 here. When that's full, that'll emit a signal of 15, which would be enough to turn on this comparator block, invert that redstone torch, pull the sticky piston back, and remove the fence. That will cause the minecart to start looping around. And it'll drop five cactus. And it'll come down here and hit the detector rail. If there's product in the minecart, a signal goes down. And it will lock that repeater right there. By locking that repeater, that will force the minecart to continue to go around in a circle. Once a minecart's empty, the signal will no longer come down and locking the hopper, in which case we'll invert that redstone torch and that redstone torch, turning that rail backwards. Oh, I can't get up there. Sorry, guys. Uh, turning that rail backwards and forcing the hopper minecart back into the system to collect up more cobble. I'm sorry, cobble, cactus. So that's kind of what we're going to do. So we're going to build this cactus farm. I only have 48 cactus right now to start with, so it's going to take a little while to get a few layers built. Uh, given the spawn rates and how much XP I'm going to need, this cactus farm is probably going to have to go up a few layers. And what I should have done was mapped out where the tower was going to go before I did all this. Um, and, you know, and actually, it's not that far off. 
it's really close. Um, you know, I, I might actually pick this up and line it with the center because the goal was to have an XP farm. I just don't know if it's going to be here within the eight towers or if we're going to move it out a little bit and then just be able to, you know, put it where I'm actively going to be. Um, we, we have an AFK kick on the server. So after 10 minutes, it'll be kicked off. So you do have to actively be moving on the server. And bypassing the AFK kick will get you a punishment, uh, anywhere from a kick to a, a temporary ban. Uh, so I would not recommend, if you want to join the server, and I talked about, I'll provide those links again in the description, um, but we don't allow AFK, period. So we're going to have to figure out where this is going to be. And I'm thinking I'm going to have it as close to the outer circle as I can, probably near the tree farm right now, uh, only because I'm going to be spending a lot of time out at the tree farm. Uh, at the shop, I'm going to be selling some wood. So it makes sense to put it where I'm going to be spending a lot of time. And we'll probably put it near the shop as well. So I'm going to get building. I'll see you guys in a few minutes. We've gotten five layers of the farm built. I don't know how much higher I'm going to have to go to get this thing to produce enough, but I'm guessing to at least eight. That would give me roughly 384 plants. There's 48 per layer. So at 240 plants, I'm not dropping a lot of cactus every hour. And this might not be uh, as much of a productive cactus farm as I'd like. Because again, we're going to be blasting through so much stone and sand and dirt and gravel and all that fun stuff. So let's just kind of jump down here. Uh, it's been running for a little while. We've got one product up here in the hopper minecart. I hope I keep hitting the hopper. Wow, I can't jump for squat. Ah, uh, so almost four stacks. Not a lot. Um, but just watching the rates here. Um, like I said, I, I don't think five stacks is going to be enough. I think I'm probably going to have to take up at least three more layers at a minimum to generate enough cactus to generate enough XP to fix everything. I mean, you know, it looks like I'm seeing between, it looks like it might be pacing six to eight per minute. Well, you figure at that rate, it's going to take, you know, 45, 50 minutes to get enough cactus just to run. Well, if I get 320 cactus, that's only 320 XP. It's not enough to fully recharge a pick. So we know clearly this is not, uh, not fast enough. So I think what I'll do uh, when I get up tomorrow <laughs> is we're going to go ahead and add at least three more layers. I might even do five. But I think we're going to, for tonight, we're going to wrap things up. We're going to call this an episode just to give you guys some updates. Again, we'll add some more to this. We're going to continue to clear out. We're also going to do some by TNT, some manually. I do want to grab a lot of this gravel, as I've already said. I need an insane amount of black concrete. And so I'm going to continue to mine some of it up. And then a rest, we'll, you know, TNT and see what happens. But... I want to thank you guys for watching. I'm sorry it took so long to get episodes out, but, you know, doing a time lapse over two weeks of clearing water, I, I thought about it, and I was going to do it, and then just things got a little bit too busy, too chaotic around here, and uh, I had to put that idea on hold. So maybe sometime down the future, or if we reset our map in a year or two, you know, we can look at that option. But I want to thank you guys again. If you are new to the channel, consider subscribing. But always remember, you got to go boomer or you got to go home. We'll see you later.